Coping with COVID and In It Together SC present Wellness Wednesday, brought to you by the Diabetes Action Council of South Carolina and DHEC's Division of Diabetes and Heart Disease Management. Coping, Coping with COVID with Trey Taylor. Happy Wellness Wednesday, and thank you so much for joining us. In It Together SC and the Diabetes Action Council of South Carolina present Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday here on Coping with COVID. Today, we're talking about something that you don't hear a lot about, but you need to know more about poisons and poison control. And it's more than what you might think. It's medicines and foods and all types of things. And we've got two great uh, experts, doctors here to uh, tell us all about it. Dr. Uh, Kelly Johnson is a triple board certified medical toxologist. She joins us from uh, Maryland. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Johnson. Hi, Trey. Thanks for having me on today. Thank you so much. We're also joined by Dr. Jill Michael, who is a pharmacist with Palmetto Poison Control. Thank you so much, Dr. Michaels. We appreciate it. Thanks. Enjoy being here. Absolutely. We're going to talk to these lovely ladies during Women's History Month right now after uh, we do your COVID community updates. We'll be right back. You can now order more COVID tests online. The Biden administration has authorized four more tests to be sent to U.S. citizens for free beginning now. You may have heard during his State of the Union address last week that you can now order four more COVID tests for free. Now, if you've not ordered your first round of tests, you can still do that and then order another four a week later. Visit covidtest.gov to order for free. Suspended South Carolina drivers have this week to clear their records. Now, those eligible should be uh, like driving under suspension, not related to alcohol or drugs, excessive points for someone under the age of 18, operating or allowing someone else to operate an uninsured vehicle, operating an uninsured vehicle, or operating an unlicensed taxi. Now, you may have gotten a letter in the mail if you are eligible. If you didn't get a letter in the mail and you want to check, you can visit scdmvonline.com for more information. Once cleared, you can apply for a new license and you may have to show proof of insurance. You can see the information on the screen as to the days and where to call. For the most up-to-date list of times, dates, and location for COVID testings and locations and COVID vaccines, you can visit scdhec.gov for more information. Now, of course, we just mentioned you can get your five free rapid COVID tests by logging on to covidtest.gov. I told you a couple of weeks ago, I ordered mine and received mine in like less than a couple of weeks. So go ahead and order yours again. COVID vaccines are being administered at several locations in and around South Carolina, including Lexington Medical Center. If you are a veteran, you can get taken care of by the VA. That's right, the VA is handling all veterans. So check out the information on the screen, contact them and get your COVID vaccination. Several retail outlets are offering COVID vaccinations also, including Kroger pharmacies. Check the screen for details about that. CVS offers vaccines at locations, including the ones inside Target stores. Walgreens is offering COVID vaccines and they're also offering free N95 masks at several locations. And the Brooklyn Baptist Church in West Columbia, South Carolina, also has a COVID vaccine clinic that's open every single day, seven days a week. You can see that information on the screen. Now, if you are having a challenge getting to your COVID vaccine or appointment, don't miss your Scott shot. The COVID, the Comet bus system is offering free rides to the Comet, uh, to your vaccination location. As a matter of fact, you can stop by the Comet main location at the corner of Sumter and Laurel Streets in Columbia, South Carolina, and you can get your COVID vaccine. Now, if you are technology challenged and uh, having a problem setting up your COVID vaccine appointment, get set up. Call Get Set Up and they can help you get set up online for your COVID vaccine appointment. There continue to be several community financial resources for those affected by COVID, including FEMA is doing COVID funeral reimbursement. If you lost a loved one due to COVID, you can get a part, portion of those funeral expenses reimbursed through FEMA. Again, that information is on the screen. SC Bar Association and SC Legal Services has a toll-free number and website for rental and mortgage help. Lexington County has a bill assistance program. SC Housing and Dominion Energy has a rental and utilities assistance program. And SC Hopes has a 24-hour assistance line from the South Carolina Department of Mental Health. Listen, uh, challenges, 
have come, particularly around mental health due to COVID. So if you know someone that is having a challenge coping with COVID, please contact SC Hopes from the Department of Mental Health. The Women of Power National Summit kicks off today through the 13th. It's virtual and in person. If you are interested, check out the information on the screen and visit them online for the Women of Power National Summit. In It Together, SC and the Diabetes Action Council of South Carolina present Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday here on Coping with COVID. We're actually streaming live on the In It Together Facebook page. Please go over there, hit like and share and follow and listen. Not only will you get notifications as to when to watch Wellness Wednesday, you can also get all types of other great information on that In It Together Facebook page. They've got information on diabetes prevention programs healthy eating, healthy living, and so much more. They've got several online resources and in-person resources. So visit the In It Together Facebook page and the In It Together website. We're also streaming live on the TaylorMade production page on Facebook. That's the home of Coping with COVID. Please go over there also. Hit like and share and follow. You'll get notifications as to when to watch Coping with COVID. We're online live Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then on Thursday and Friday, we do Coping with Trey Taylor, which is also 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then first Monday, Monday, Monday with comedian George Wallace. We also have a presence on YouTube. Go over there and hit the subscribe button. We want you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. There you can also find past episodes of Coping with COVID. We've been on the air since COVID started, and we have got tons and tons of content for you to check out and for you to watch and for you to share. We also have a presence on Instagram and also on Twitter. Now, all of the information that I just mentioned, it is going to be scrolling throughout the show at the bottom of the screen. You can see the scroll if you want information on all of the financial resources, want to know where to get a COVID test or a COVID vaccine, that and so much more scrolling at the bottom of the screen throughout the show. I want to thank you again so much for watching Coping with COVID, updates on the pandemic and information to help you thrive and survive COVID-19. want you to remind you to please continue to post and share this information out so we can get the message to the masses. Mitchell Peace Joy Jen says good afternoon. Good afternoon to you to Mitchell, thank you so much for joining us. Today we are talking about poisons and poison control. Uh, we are joined first by Dr. Uh, Kelly Johnson Arbor. She is a triple board certified medical toxicology physician who also specializes in emergency medicine and hyperbaric medicine. She has been in practice for over 15 years and is co-medical director for the National Capital Poison Center and Assistant Professor of Plastic Surgery. I need some work done, girl, at Emergency Medicine at Georgetown University School of Medicine. Thank you so much, Dr. Johnson Arbor, for joining us today. Oh, thanks for having me here today, Trey. This is awesome. Oh, awesome. Thank you. So listen, I, you know, like I said in the beginning, we think of poisons as like bleach and, and poison, you know, more, more common known poisons. But tell us, what are poisons? What What is poisonous to our system? So that's really an interesting point, Trey. So really anything in the world can be a, po a poison. It wow. really depends on the dose. If you think about it, water can be poisonous. We've all heard about, you know, people doing fraternity hazings or whatever, and they drink yeah. a lot of water and they end up getting really sick and dying. That's because water can be poisonous. Wow. I had a conversation today with another doctor about oxygen. Oxygen can be poisonous if you have too much of it for too long. Anything in the world can be poisonous. It really just all depends on the dose. Some things are poisonous in very, very small doses and other things are poisonous in higher doses. So how do we know what to avoid, <laughs> you know, and what not to avoid? Well, you know, in general, you know, exposure to things in moderation is, is okay. So, you know, we we all want to eat a balanced diet, for example, and the same goes with, with medications and over-the-counter um, items also. So, you know, we, we want to take medications as directed. We don't want to mix medications if there's no need to. Um, we want to use medications in the way that they are intended to be used. So that's important because sometimes things can cause problems if you use them the wrong way, for example. Yeah. What about children? Are there certain things that are more toxic, so to speak, for different populations? Let's talk about children first. 
Sure. So children are smaller than adults, right? They have a lower body weight and a lower body surface area. So basically they're, they're smaller compared to us adults. And because of that, they can get poisoned by things that wouldn't necessarily poison adults in the same dose. So it will take much less of a substance in many cases to be poisonous to a child than an adult. Right. And then of course, what about adults? And I guess that would be someone, I don't know, 18 till 50, maybe? Sure. So we worry about the extremes of age, right? So the very, very young, the very, very young infants, younger than six months of age, when you're that young, your body is still forming and growing and your enzyme systems that your body uses to break down drugs and other products are not mature. It takes until about like six months of age to have the ability to break down drugs. So that's why you'll see a lot of times that certain drugs, even over the counter products are not recommended for very, very young children and infants, just because the body um, metabolizes and react to them differently in that very young age. And then when you get older, when you get, you know, older than 65 years, for example, um, people in that age group are more likely to have underlying problems with their liver or their kidneys. And these are organs that also are used by the body to break down and or get rid of drugs from the body. So we have to worry about the potential for toxic effects in those age groups as well. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because I was going to mention, you know, this show is a sponsored by the Diabetes Action Council and In It Together SC. And we talk a lot on this show about pre-existing conditions, diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure. Are there things specifically that that demographic needs to be more conscientious about? Absolutely. So again, the kidney and the liver um, are really important. So the liver is the organ in the body that detoxifies and metabolizes a lot of the drugs that enter our body. So if you have liver problems, um, you know, from underlying liver disease or alcohol use or anything else, that can make it difficult for your body to break down and metabolize drugs. In diabetes, a lot of ind individuals have kidney problems. Um, and the kidneys are the organ that gets rid of a lot of toxins. So when you urinate, generally you urinate a lot of toxins out of the body. Um, and that's mediated by your kidneys. If you have diabetes and you have poor kidney function because of diabetes, that can impair your body's ability to get rid of drugs. So we worry about those populations as well. So absolutely, people who have underlying health conditions, including diabetes and kidney disease and even heart disease, should check with their doctor before starting new medications because they may be more susceptible to just regular side effects at regular dosing, um, toxicity, as well as a decreased ability to break down these drugs. Yeah, we are talking to Dr. Kelly Johnson Arbor. She's a triple board certified medical toxicology physician specializing in emergency medicine and hyperbaric medicine. And you are watching Wellness Wednesday from In It Together SC and the Diabetes Advisory Council. I'm Trey Taylor. And listen, Dr. Uh, Johnson, I want to ask you too about certain medicines because, you know, you mentioned something that I want to get back to as far as um, our waste material cleansing out our, our body. But or I, I've read before about people having an adverse reaction to some medicines as opposed to other people and other medicines. So that's, I guess, a category of poisonous materials also, correct? Right. So some people can have just these random adverse reactions that other people do not have. So there can be very rare hypersensitivity reactions. These are, uh, th that's a fancy name for an allergic reaction. Um, <laughs> and those can happen after using a lot of drugs. So like sulfa drugs, like Bactrim um, are, are known for causing hypersensitivity reactions. And a lot of other drugs can do that as well. Um, and then within the population, there are some people that just have, for whatever reason, a lower ability to metabolize drugs. And so you may know somebody, for example, example, who can't, who, you know, can't drink alcohol because they get really, really flushed or they get really, really sick after just having one or two drinks. And those are people in, frequently that just have a problem metabolizing the alcohol and the toxins can build up in their body and really have adverse effects. So yeah, it's something that people may not know. Um, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, we were giving codeine a lot of times to children after tonsillectomies, and then children started dying. And we realized that that was because some children have a problem metabolizing the codeine, and they it builds up in their system, and it causes them to stop breathing, and they die. So because we don't, we just don't test children routinely for this problem, it's now recommended that we don't use codeine in children.
but there certainly are adults that could have the same problem. So yeah, definitely people can have adverse reactions and they may not even know that they're susceptible to them. This is so fascinating because again, like I said at the beginning, I think our minds are conditioned to believe poisons are a certain thing, you know? But poisons could be anything, as you're saying now. It could be poisonous. And what can be poisonous to one may not be poisonous to somebody else. Absolutely. You're completely right about that. Yeah. And I'm not even a doctor. <laughs> so, uh, Dr. Johnson Arbor, what about we've been talking a lot about things that we ingest. And, and I want to get back to alcohol in a minute because you did mention something about alcohol that I want to get to. But what about some things that are topical? can we, I mean, poison ivy is the first thing, you know, that comes to mind, but I, you know, I tell you, I bought a bracelet <laughs> the other day and it, listen, it was $5. Okay. But I noticed that all of a sudden my arm started breaking out like the third time I wore it. So what, let's talk a little bit about topical things that may be poisonous to us. Sure. So I want to start out first just by talking about allergic reactions. So there's different types types of allergic reactions. If you get stung by a bee, right, it's really, really painful. It happens right away. You might get some swelling. You might, you know, in really severe cases have trouble breathing. That's a traditional allergic reaction that occurs immediately after you get exposed to some poison, like a bee sting. Right. Um, right. But you can also have delayed reactions. And that's what happens when you wear that cheap costume jewelry, like the $5 <laughs> bracelet. Now I know this stuff is super cute and we love it. And you, you know, you go into Target and you see it in the dollars, the dollar section, you're like, oh, I have to have that bracelet. It's so cute. The problem with that jewelry is that the, the jewelry that is less expensive is typically made from nickel. And a large percentage of the population has a sensitivity to nickel. And right. once you wear it, your body starts to react. And after a couple of days of, of wearing it, you break out on a rash. And that's probably exactly what happened to you. Yes. Medicine, we call this a delayed type hypersensitivity reaction. Um, and it just, you know, it just means that your body just doesn't like nickel. Um, and again, a lot of us, including myself, have that same reaction. So if you're somebody who reacts to jewelry that in that way, you don't want to wear the cheap jewelry. You want to like keep it as far away from your body as you can. Now it's right. interesting because you can have it in your body. Like you could have something that's nickel implanted in you and it won't cause the same reaction necessarily but it when it's on your skin it causes that itching and that rash and that redness it's really irritating yeah well the interesting thing is i've worn this type this brand of jewelry before but and never had any problems that i could see and then it was just odd that this particular bracelet which is like you said it is so cute i was looking to see if it was right here it was so cute <laughs> but girl after three days, and I mean, I didn't go to sleep with it. I got took it off and then wore it again, took it off and wore it again because it was so cute, as you said. But it, it look, this these red bumps on my arm. <laughs> cute. Yeah. So, so I, I was surprised because, I, like I said, I had worn that type of jewelry before and not had a problem prior to. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a delayed reaction. And the other thing about costume jewelry is sometimes it's made overseas. And now in the US, we have really, really strict laws about lead, for example, in products in foods and spices and cookware and jewelry. But the Consumer Product Safety Commission can't test everything. And so right. we had a case recently where there was a, um, a piece of jewelry that somebody put in their mouth and they got lead poisoning from it. So oh that still happens. So you've got to be really careful about that costume jewelry. I will tell you, I've got two young kids. I let my kids like run around in the mud. My kids can like walk by high voltage power lines, whatever, all that stuff I'm good with. I do not let them play with toys from the dollar section of Target or Walmart because I'm concerned about potential lead exposure. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Uh, Kelly Johnson Arbor uh, joins us. She has been in practice for over 15 years and is the co-medical director of National Capital Poison Center and an assistant professor of plastic surgery and emergency medicine at Georgetown University School of Medicine. She joins us today on Wellness Wednesday from Edit Together SC and the Diabetes Advisory Council. Uh, Dr. Uh, Arbor Johnson, um, Mitchell Peace Joy Jen says spices and seafood reactions can be harmful too. She said, what are your thoughts about that? Thank you, Mitchell, for your question. So absolutely. So seafood can be really challenging, um, even like eating different types of fish. So um, 
depending on what type of fish you eat, you can actually get poisoned by it. So from, from shellfish, you can get certain, like many different types of shellfish poisoning um, that can range from diarrhea to even memory loss. Um, oh my goodness. And, yeah. And then down in South Carolina, let's see, you guys have all that calabash seafood. I think yes. down here. So <laughs> I've never had that, but I, um, and the, you know, in the warmer areas of the country, you may eat like snapper or tuna yeah. or something like that. And those can also be poisonous. There's a couple different types of fish poisoning that I do want to mention. Um, one of them is called scombroid and scombroid occurs when fish are just left out in the sun for too long. Oh, and there's wow. a toxin that builds up and it causes you to have like flushing and nausea and vomiting and really, really nasty gastrointestinal symptoms. Usually you want to go to the hospital, you take Benadryl for and it goes away. There's another type of fish poisoning that occurs that um, you can't detect it. it. The fish looks normal, it tastes normal, but it's called ciguatera. Ciguatera is really, really weird because it causes the GI symptoms, but it also causes you to have burning and a, a reversal of hot and cold sensations in your hands and feet. So you step on cool tile and it feels hot or you step on something hot, you touch a hot cup of coffee and it feels really cold. Um, and those can be really irritating symptoms that can last for a long time. Um, spices are also dangerous. I actually wrote an article about toxicity of spices. People don't really think about this, but spices smell really good, right? We use mm -hmm. them all the time in our kitchen and young children or even some, you know, teenagers or young adults might think that they might want to swallow them. So if you, you know, mix yeah. some cinnamon, for example, like in your cinnamon bread or your coffee, not a big deal. But if you try to swallow a teaspoon of cinnamon, you will cough and you will choke. And if you have something like asthma, you could have a full blown asthma attack from that. Um, and that that happens on a regular basis. Unfortunately, people, especially young children, um, think that spices are yummy because they smell so good, but they don't taste as good as they smell. Um, yeah. Spices can also have contamination with lead and, and other chemicals. So you've got to be careful with spices, too. Yeah. You know, you just made me think about something because I use a uh, vaporizer in all of the rooms and uh, my babies, they love the cinnamon one. And now that I'm thinking about it, and I do sometimes, I go in there, it smells so good. So I need to really be conscientious about making sure that cinnamon bottle, you know, because it's the oil, the cinnamon oil is really tight. It's up high and they're little, three and six. But um, but once you said that, I thought thought to myself, you know, I've got to be conscientious about that. Yeah. And cinnamon oil can be really irritating. If it gets in your mouth and your eyes are on your skin, it can cause blisters and redness. It can be really painful. Um, and cinnamon is, you know, we all have cinnamon in our homes and the essential oil smells great. Yeah. But, you know, unfortunately, if, like kids are very smart and children know how to get around child resistant <laughs> packaging. So you've got to be really careful with anything like that because kids will will get into it. You would you would you would think that they're smart enough not to, but they are smart enough to get around that packaging and they will open it up and try to drink it. So well, it's really sort of important to keep that all away. Yeah, they have questions about it. They're, mm -hmm. They want to know, mm, let me see what's going on with that. You know? Yeah, yeah. So just because something smells good does not mean <laughs> that it tastes good. And, you know, things that smell good, like cinnamon, can certainly be poisonous. Yeah. Thank vanilla you. Vanilla is another one. So vanilla actually, by law in the US, vanilla has to contain a certain amount of alcohol. So some people will actually drink vanilla extract in an attempt to get drunk. And it works because vanilla has a high concentration of alcohol in it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Things that you wouldn't think, right? So no, that, no, I wouldn't think, but <laughs> you no. think that people are calling poison control because they're over overdosing on heroin, but no, we get a most of the calls that we get a poison control are about like a lot, a lot of household products, things that people have in their homes on a daily basis. Wow. Um, yeah. It's We're amazing. going to talk to Jill Michaels in the next segment. She's uh, with Palmetto Poison Center about um, some antidotes, about what to do when you call the Poison Control Center, about you know what to do before. And I'm sure she'll have some stories about <laughs> vanilla ingestion. Wow, that's, that's, that's interesting. Um, you make another great point about spices. How, when, you know, listen, girl, I probably have some spices in my pantry, like many others that have been there since I bought my house in 2004. <laughs> do, do spices get, um, do you like old spices? I mean, I know you need to throw them out, but, but are they, do they become toxic? Do they become toxic? Or, so or spice, shelf life on spices? 
Okay, so I recommend, Trey, that you go to your house and look at the expiration date on those spice bottles because, yeah, they, they will go bad over time, right? Because they're they're very potent and they're what we yeah. use to give flavors and odors to foods. And so you don't want to be putting old spices in your foods. It's not going to taste good or smell good. Yeah. Um, but the, the, the poisonous quality of spices will stay the same no matter how old they are. Um, a lot of the poisonous qualities come from just the irritation effects. If you get yeah. cinnamon powder into your lungs, that can be really, really dangerous and it can cause permanent effects in your lungs. Right. So make sure, look, Dr. Johnson just said a big thing, expiration dates, Trey. <laughs> <laughs> expiration dates, everybody. Check your expiration dates. Don't be so slack. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Dr. Uh, Kelly Johnson Arbor joins us today on Wellness Wednesday from In It Together SC and the Diabetes Action Council. We're talking about poisons, but listen, we've been talking about some everyday things that we may not think in our mind as poison, but actually are. Two more things I want to ask you about, uh, Dr. Johnson, before you leave. Um, what We talked a little bit about this alcohol. You mentioned that sometimes alcohol can be poisonous, so to speak, to certain people. Right. So alcohol is a legal poison. It is something that we can buy in the store. Um, and it actually, it, it causes very well-defined effects in everyone. So mm -hmm. you might think that you're able to tolerate your alcohol, but you're just not noticing how drunk you actually are. Um, we have very, very reputable, very good studies from the automotive industry about the effects of alcohol on the human brain. Um, and at even at very low doses, like lower than the legal limit of driving of 0.08, at doses lower than that, there are visible um, impairments that people have. So you've got to be really careful when drinking alcohol. You definitely don't want to drink alcohol if you're taking any other drug or supplement or medication that can cause you to become more sleepy or somnolent or confused. So your like your antidepressants, your anxiety medications, definitely avoid using alcohol in combination with those. Yeah, yeah. And then of course, um, some of the things we you know, commonly know it's as isopropyl rubbing alcohol, uh, peroxide, bleach, things of that sort. Um, like I said, we're going to talk to uh, Jill Michaels in just a minute about what to do if you ingest those. But, you know, I find that even I again, I'm mopping up, you know, you've got little ones. I've got little ones. I'm mopping up. And for some reason, I, I, I guess you're going to think she's crazy. I just put a little bit of bleach on the it was chalk. It was a little bit of bleach on the uh, it was just a little bit on the mop. And then, of course, the fumes, you know, those are other things I don't think we think about inhaling poisons. Yeah. And when you think about your young kiddos at home, you know, they are, are young and small and they're short, so they're closer to the floor. So they're going to get more of an inhalational exposure. So wow. if you're working with bleach or anything like that, be sure to open up the windows, turn on the air conditioner, ventilate the area as much as you can. Um, especially if you have underlying lung disease or heart disease, you want to make sure that you are ventilating those at that area as best as possible because that can trigger an asthma attack or difficulty breathing in people who are susceptible. Before you leave, anything else you want to share with us about things we need to be conscientious about as far as uh, substances, spices, foods, uh, things of that sort as far as poison is concerned? Yeah, so um, a, a couple of things. One one quick thing is I was on, I actually went to South Carolina for spring break last year wow. and I was driving along 95 and I was in Myrtle Beach and I saw all these signs for Delta 8. So if you don't know what Delta 8 is, it is a chemical cousin of marijuana that is completely yeah. legal in South Carolina. Um, and it does cause euphoria and psychoactive effects. It affects the brain just like marijuana does. So you do want to be careful when using it. Even though it's legal, it can still be poisonous and still cause really bad effects. We do not know what the long-term effects of Delta-8 use are. Um, we don't know that, you know, we know that a lot of teenagers and young adults are using it because they perceive it to be safer because it's legal. We don't know that it's any safer than traditional marijuana. So be really careful about Delta-8. Um, there's a bunch of other similar products that you can buy in stores down there. So like there's like Delta-9 THC, O acetate. There's like a bunch of other yeah. marijuana derivatives that are legal. So you got to be careful about all of those. Um, just lastly, I do want to say that people are sometimes scared to call poison control because, you know, you might think that we're going to report you to protective yeah. services because you let your kids swallow bleach or whatever else. We don't do that. We are not a government agency. We are not a reporting agency. We are not going to call the police on you or anything like that. Um, poison control is free to the public. There are two ways to contact us. 
We have the 1-800-222-1222 number. And again, we're open 24 hours a day, every day of the year. You can also go online to www.poison.org. We have an online poison control database there. So if you don't want to call for some reason or don't want to be on hold, you can go online and get poison advice too. All right. That's great information. We can see the information there for uh, Dr. Kelly Johnson Arbor, co-medical director of the National Capital Poison Center. You can see her information and the website poison.org. Thank you so much for joining us today and uh, enlightening us with all of this great information. I appreciate it. And believe me, I'm good with my <laughs> I like I said, I'm sitting up here thinking, oh, I'm so glad you don't report people because I've, I've said at least two things today. <laughs> we don't report, but check those expiration dates, Trey. Kelly, I'm going to check my <laughs> Listen, they're just sitting there. They just look good. They're in alphabetical order. <laughs> Oh my goodness, you alphabetize your spices. That's awesome. You got that cute little spice rack. Yeah, keep them. You just, just replace them whenever they get old. Throw them out, buy new ones, get them at Costco. You can get the big ones at Costco. That's even a waste of money because I'm not using those spices. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's why they're expired. I'm not using them. Right. Kelly Johnson, thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate it. And thank let's you, Trey. This was South great. Carolina, give me a call. Okay. <laughs> you are watching uh, Wellness Wednesday. In it together, SC and the Diabetes Action Council of South Carolina present Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday here on Coping with COVID. I'm Trey Taylor, and we just talked with uh, jo Dr. Johnson arbor about what poisons are man that was just enlightening coming up jill michaels with the uh, palmetto poison center is going to tell us about what we need to do and how when we feel like we have been poisoned that's coming up next on coping with covid it's wellness wednesday i'm trey taylor hi i'm kimberly aiken cockrum as miss america i know that taking care of yourself is important Part of taking care of your health is knowing if you're at risk of type 2 diabetes. Prediabetes is serious and puts you at risk for developing type 2 diabetes. 90% of South Carolinians who have it don't know they have it. Visit inittogethersc.org. Take an online test to find out your risk and join a diabetes prevention program. Brought to you by the Diabetes Action Council of South Carolina. Computers, they're a part of our everyday lives, but when they're not working, they're an everyday problem. So call Computers Unique, your everyday solution. 803-351-5821. Is your computer running slow? Won't turn on? Do you need a screen replaced? Or maybe you just need another computer? Well, Computers Unique is your one-stop shop for all your computer needs. They have a wide variety of new and pre-owned PCs, Macs, and tablets. So call Computers Unique, Dutch Square Mall. 803-351-5821. 803 803-351 Five one five eight two one. Visit Davis Tax Service today, 803-419-1001. The Comet gives me a reliable source of transportation. It's very convenient to me, and I have wonderful drivers. It's clean, and it builds community. It's fun to meet people. It makes me feel, like, really independent. It's just fun. The Comet's always going to be there, and it gets me everywhere I need to go. We try to ride every single day. Comedy is our livelihood. In it together, SC and the Diabetes Advisory Council present Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday here on Coping with COVID. I'm Trey Taylor, and uh, we are streaming live on the In It Together Facebook page. As a matter of fact, please go over there, hit like and share and follow. Not only will you be able to watch Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday here on Coping with COVID, but man, they've got so much great information over there about a diabetes prevention program, fitness tips, 
eating tips, all kind of great information on the In It Together Facebook page and on their website too. We're also streaming live on the TaylorMade production page. That's the home of Coping with COVID. Please go over there again, hit like and share and follow. Get notifications as to when we go live every Wednesday for Coping with COVID at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then Coping with Trey Taylor airs Thursday and Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then of course, Monday, Monday with George Wallace. He's been under the weather the uh, last couple of uh, months, but he's going to join us really soon again. We're also streaming live on YouTube. Please go over there, hit the subscribe button and uh, check out all of the previous shows and check us out on Instagram and also on Twitter. We are talking today about poison control. We just had a fascinating conversation with uh, Dr. Kelly Johnson Arbor with the uh, Georgetown University School of Medicine. And uh, she told us about some things that I didn't realize, and maybe you didn't either, about what poisons actually are. Well, we're joined now by Dr. Jill Michael. She's a pharmacist and board certified in clinical toxicology. She's the managing director of the Palmetto Poison Center and a clinical associate professor at the College of Pharmacy at the University. University of South Carolina. Hey, Jill, thank you so much for joining us today. Sure, looking forward to it. Good. Listen, so I, I was, I, and I, I guess you heard uh, our conversation with uh, Dr. Uh, Johnson Arbor. I, I, as I said, that was just fascinating to me because I think we just think poisons are one thing and don't think about how many things are actually poison us to right. our systems. Yeah. Is, is that your your thoughts about it too? Is, is that your experience? Yeah, I mean, people think of poison like a strychnine yeah. or arsenic or, you know, lead poisoning. And certainly all those are poisons too. But for the poison center world, what we think of poisons are what are in your home right now. Yeah. Cleaners, yeah. medications, personal care products, pesticides, um, all those things, if used incorrectly or accidentally ingested or inhaled, can be a poison. Or if they're old, like my spices downstairs. <laughs> yeah, it may not work as well, but yeah. <laughs> so let's listen, I don't want to mess my alphabetical order up. But anyway, listen, so Dr. Michaels, what are some of the most common poisons you're seeing at the Palmetto Poison Center? Yeah, it, it's it's what you have in your home. Right. So, you know, our calls are kind of half and half, actually. People think poison centers are just for little kids. Yeah. Um, but a, a lot of our calls are actually from adults. Uh, for various reasons. Um, so, but we get calls on just what you have in your home. So someone um, acts, so this, the number one reason adults get poisoned in, in my mind um, from a, uh, besides a medication error is they're, they put some, a chemical or a pesticide in a smaller container because they don't want the big gallon or two container. Yeah. In, and, and it's not, well, you shouldn't take it out of the original container, but they put it in a drink container, something that's non-labeled and it looks like something to drink. So like bleach, oh. right? The big, the big bleach containers and they don't want to carry the big bleach container around. So they put it in a glass or a cup and they move around the house, they forget they have it in here, and they oh get my goodness. And drink. Um, so it's, it's things like that, but things that you have in your house right now, we get calls on toothpaste and deodorant, um, pesticides. What, what, what happens with toothpaste? How, how is toothpaste when does toothpaste become poisonous? Yeah, well, so the fluoride in toothpaste is what can be irritating to the stomach. You'd have to eat a lot of toothpaste to get a lot of fluoride um, to be really toxic from the fluoride. But it can cause tummy upsets. But there's other fluoride products. Um, there's prescription fluoride tablets. There's also fluoride in like the, the rinse products that you get for your teeth. Um, so fluoride is kind of minimal unless you're really trying to hurt yourself in those types of products. But yeah, yeah so um, it's it's medications in your home, over the counter pain relievers like Tylenol, ibuprofen, we get calls on because we buy them for ourselves. We also buy them for our children. Um, and and uh, we also get this time of year, a lot of uh, Claritin, Benadryl, uh, Zyrtec calls because people are having seasonal allergies and they're going to have those medications in their home. And so are they taking too many, uh, Dr. Michaels, or is somebody taking them um, well, so mistakenly? Yeah, it can be, you know, I, I took my dose last night. I was taking my regular medications in the morning and I accidentally grabbed that bottle and took it as well. Oh, yeah. I had that call this morning, but then again, leaving it out on the, the counter and forgetting little two-year-olds or busybodies yeah. and leaving the medication bottles out for the accidentally for the kids to get into, the, that's a typical scenario as well. 
Jill Michaels is a pharmacist, board certified in clinical toxicology. She's the managing director of the Palmetto Poison Center and a clinical associate professor at the College of Pharmacy at the University of South Carolina. I'm Trey Taylor. You're watching Wellness Wednesday on Coping with COVID from the Diabetes Action Council and In It Together SC. We're talking about poisons. And right now we're talking with uh, Dr. Michaels about what to do. So, all right. So this happens. How do you know that oh, I need to call the poison center. I mean, how, what's happening? It's just because you took it or are you having some kind of reaction? Well, we don't want you to wait for symptoms to occur because okay. sometimes if you wait for symptoms, it can be too late, unfortunately. Yeah. So if you think you've accidentally taken a double dose of your medication or you've taken accidentally someone else's medication or you got the bug spray accidentally you know, sprayed back in your eye, you're using the bleach in the bathroom, you talked about the heavy fumes and you're having some irritation, call us right away, that's what we're here for. People are sometimes embarrassed when they call about something and say, oh, you're gonna be okay, it's okay for you to watch at home. Like, well, I'm sorry I wasted your time, you did not waste my time. I'm it's here that, for this. <laughs> that's what I'm here for to tell you because it's the, we need to tease out the things that are okay versus like you talked about, or this, the, the things that doesn't take much to be toxic. Yeah. We wanna make sure you call us because then we will refer you in for medical care. So any question, if you think something's been used inappropriately, um, you know, like a medication or a pesticide, a cleaner, call us. I mean, that's what we're here for. Yeah. So do you call you instead of 911? So if you forget our number or you know, you, you're afraid to, to look it up, that's fine. Um, then what you say, I want to talk to poison control. They can transfer you immediately to us so they can do that as well. Um, or they sometimes when they find out some poisoning, they will transfer the caller to us anyway if they knew not to call us. But we are every poison center in the U.S. has one phone number 1-800-222-1222. So it's easy to find us online, but we are any, if you're in California, you call that number, you get the closest poison centers. That's what's great about it. And we're open 24 right. seven. Um, so someone is always going to answer your question. And when you call, you're talking to nurses and pharmacists and sometimes physicians who are trained in toxicology. They're there to answer your question specifically about what you're calling about. Right. Uh, the Palmetto Poison Center, as uh, Dr. Michael says, is an emergency hotline that provides information and treatment advice for poisonings. And as she said, it's staffed by nurses and pharmacists. And the center is open 24 hours a day. So once you call, what happens next? What's sure. Your yeah, we're going to get some information because we're providing medical information for, uh, for you. We're going to get some information back. So that's for your safety and mine. Um, again, it's confidential. We do not contact anybody accidents happen. You know, I sometimes tell people, you know, they're upset. And I'm like, listen, you're my third ibuprofen call today. <laughs> yeah. You're not, you know, I, you're not special. You're not um, special. <laughs> this happens all the time. Don't worry about it. You know, you're not a bad parent because people get, you know, they feel guilty and they shouldn't. Um, but when they call, we're going to ask for your, your name or your child's name who, or whoever the patient is. So we know who they're calling about. We're going to get your phone number. So if we need to make a call back to you, we can contact you back and we're going to get your zip code. And that's for purposes for us to know where our calls are coming from. If we need to do any type of education in an area or to know where there's a problem going on. Um, but that's the minimum of information we're going to get. That's all. That's for your safety and ours. And then we're going to ask you the name of the, the poison. So is it the medication you took a double dose of? So what's the medication name? What's the milligrams? Um, if it's a cleaner like Lysol, which Lysol is it? Is it the bathroom mm -hmm. cleaner? The, so have, so what it, have whatever substance in your hand because we're going to be asking you these questions. Right. Um, and then we're going to ask, you know, how long has it been since this happened? You know, so is it five days ago or five minutes ago? Right, we'll right. Talk about things a little differently. Um, and then we're also going to ask the, the patient information, how old they are, sometimes their weight, especially when it's a little child. Um, we do things based on their weight. And then we're going to ask, are they having any symptoms that may be related to what they were exposed to? What treatment you've already done? You talked about this. What do one of people do? Keep the patient calm make sure they're um, breathing, it, have a, a clear open airway. Um, and then if you want to, you know, wipe out the mouth, if it's on, wipe off the skin, remove them to, uh, to fresh air, a little bit of water, but then give us a call. One thing I want to make sure is people need to know, do not induce vomiting. 
for any person, any time, any reason. Um, you can cause more harm and it does no good. Right. Um, so just a little sip of water, wipe whatever, give us a call. And so we're going to ask that. And then we're going to, you know, if it, there's any other medication information we need about you or medical history that will help us decide, we'll do that. And then based on how much you were exposed to, we're going to ask about that too. You know, we're going to take the age and weight of the person, how much they were exposed to and determine, okay, this is safe for you to watch at home. You may have some minimal side effects. These are those side effects. But if this happens, which I don't expect, then you give me a call. Um, some people we will, you know, call back in an hour to check on them um, or the patient. Um, if you do go to the hot, if we do say, hey, this is something that could be potentially toxic, you need to see a doctor for it. If we recommend the hospital, sometimes we can say you can go in your own car, in your own vehicle, or sometimes call 911. But we will follow up with the hospital to make sure you get there and that you're getting the, the care that you need. So we'll, we'll follow up with you with uh, to make sure you're doing okay there at the hospital. Um, but that's typically a call. It only takes about three to five minutes, quite honestly, to give us a call. And, you know, most of the majority of the time we leave you at home, we leave you at work, we leave you at school if it's a minimal um, toxicity, but sometimes people have to go in and, and that's okay too, but that's what we're here for to help you determine that. All right, you can see the number scrolling at the bottom of the screen for uh, Poison Control, 800-222-1222. And as uh, Jill said, that number rings wherever you are, wherever you are in the United States of America, you can call that number, 800-222-1222. If you think uh, that you have, or even if you don't think, you know, if you just went ahead and uh, ingested too much whatever, or if you're a child or dog too, if was it for animals too, Jill? So there is an animal poison center. Um, we, I'm not trained in animal toxicology. I will say I know a little bit um, and, you know, I'll preface it. Well, this, I have a dog. So I'm like, well, this is my dog. Here's what I would do, but I'm not the expert. Right. Um, because the, the animal poison center actually charges. And okay. so I know some people don't have the funds for that, but a lot of medications with animals we can't help with because people say, well, what'd you do for a child? I'm not gonna say it, it's different because dogs and cats metabolize and process medications differently from us, way different sometimes. Um, so we can't apply a cat or dog to a small child. Um, but so yeah, preferably no animal calls, but we try to help you out if we can. 800-222-1222 for Palmetto Poison Center. Accidental ingestions, medical errors, chemical mishaps. Uh, calls to the center are free and confidential, as uh, Jill said. And I love that you said, Jill, you know, this is a no judgment free zone. <laughs> you know, right. things happen. Mistakes happen. Yeah, I've been doing this for uh, close to 25 years, so I've heard about everything, right? Um, so it, it takes a, it takes a lot for me to raise my eyebrows now. So it, it's human nature. Well, you look like you're about 25, so you <laughs> <laughs> you've been there from birth, girl. So you should know everything about the poison sensor. I love that you said too. Give them a little bit of water, wipe it off, because I, I I don't know if you've heard this. You know, I don't know if this is cultural. I've been raised to think drink some milk. Have you heard yeah. That? yeah. Yeah. So yeah, people think, you know, I think about like this, you know, think milk's an antidote. Well, I drink milk for dinner, right? It, it, it's, it's not a drug. It's, 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 it's something to drink. So it doesn't really coat the stomach. If anything, right. we don't want it down for some things because it can curdle in the tummy and kind of okay. give you a queasy stomach. It's not going to hurt. But we prefer clear fluids like water or juice, no carbonated drinks, um, no milk, um, no caffe caffeinated drinks. I'm just plain water is fine. Yeah. Um, in It Together SC and the Diabetes Action Council present a Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday here on Coping with COVID. I'm Trey Taylor. Dr. Jill Michaels joins us. She's a, a pharmacist, board certified in clinical toxicology and the managing director of the Palmetto Poison uh, Center. Uh, Jill, we focus a lot here on pre-existing conditions, diabetes, heart disease, hypertension. Is there something specific that people in that demographic need to be conscientious about concerning uh, poisons and toxicity? 
Yeah, I mean, we get calls on that um, where people actually take a double dose of their blood pressure medication. So what we recommend, depending on the situation, if you don't, you know, have a blood pressure cuff, because you probably at home, you know, you can use little automated ones from the pharmacy because your doctor probably wants you to be checking it anyway. Um, so in that situation, depending on the severity of it, we'll just have you you know, check your blood pressure so often and we'll call back, you know, and check on you. Kind of the same thing with any insulin or sugar pills or diabetic pills someone may take, depending on, again, how much or what it is. We can have you eat something, have your blood sugar checked at home, and we'll check in with you. We play we play phone tag with you for a couple hours um, to make sure you're doing okay. Um, but some, you know, sugar pills can be very, very um, uh, toxic, um, especially to a small child. Those are one of those things that one tablet ingested is a trip to the emergency room. Wow. Um, so always double check, even if it's the question of, I'm not sure, you know, I found the child with the open bottle of tablets and I don't yeah. know if they ingested any, call us because we'd rather be safe than sorry. We don't want to wait for symptoms to occur because when your blood sugar is too low, that that's a big, big problem. Yeah, yeah. The number for the Palmetto Poison Center is 1-800-222-1222. That's the number wherever you live in the whole wide world. So please give them a call. They're open uh, 24 hours a day and the services are free of charge and confidential. Uh, we talked a little bit about people with pre-existing conditions um, and you mentioned kids. So is there something different we should do for kids as opposed to seniors? No, about the same. It's all gonna be based on, for kids, a lot of times their weight um, with the medication, that's how they're dosed by, based on weight. So that's how we'll assess it. If they get into a medication, you know, number one, do children take the medication? Mm -hmm. So if we have a dose for a child, we can see, okay, if they were on it, would this be the same normal dose they would be on? Or is it way beyond what would be a healthy, normal dose for them. Um, but if they're not, you know, if it's not a, a lot of drugs are not prescribed for children. And so if we have no information about it, we're not going to say we'll sit at home and watch. We're going to say, let's go to the hospital and have yeah. the doctors and nurses watch to make sure there are no problems. So kind of the same, um, it, it, no matter who it is, if, if, if we don't have good information about how much you took, what can happen, we're going to, we're, we're, we're of the safe than sorry. We want to send you in to be checked out. We've got a question. Um, it says, there are a lot of dangerous things that people try. She says, some humans take dog dewormer medication to help cure ailments. Have you ever heard about that? So the only thing I've heard recently has been um, the ivermectin for COVID. So ivermectin is actually a drug people can take. You know, in the U.S., we have clean water, we have clean food, so we don't have a lot of intestinal worms and such like other in other countries. And so we don't see it too often used. But um, the ivermectin is the only thing I've seen used recently for, for the COVID. Um, I can't think of anything else I've seen um, for that. Right. And of course, uh, thank you for your question. Of course, we heard about <clears throat> take bleach and that'll clean you out, <clears throat> hopefully. Did you get a lot of calls during that time? Do you remember when that was said? <laughs> Yeah, we actually, so when COVID first hit in, the, in all poison centers that first year and even till now, we've had an increase in bleach and disinfectant calls, but also hand sanitizer calls. Wow. Hand sanitizer has a, a mo, most hand sanitizer is alcohol based, ethanol alcohol based. Right. And it has a large percent. Um, and for kids, it can lower their blood sugar. Remember, kids can be a little bit different um, besides causing like, you know, drunk inebriation type symptoms. Um, so, yeah, so those calls have certainly increased. So our, our, it's changed a little bit over time what we're seeing based on what's going on outside. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you mentioned the thing about hand sanitizer. Are there some things we need because we're still dealing with COVID for the most part and, you know, washing your hands, sanitizing your hands. And so is there something people need to be conscientious about with, yeah. with hand sanitizers? Yeah, I mean, you know, we've got it all. I mean, you know, I've got some in my car now. I've got some in my purse. So, you know, we make it accessible. It also makes it accessible for little hands to get a hold of it as well. And, you know, a lot of the they make them smell good. Right. So kids are or they're colored. So it looks like something ooh tasty to to drink. So be aware if you have, um, you know, little kids, don't leave it out for them to grab a hold of, because like I said, for kids, it can lower their blood sugar. And that's a big concern. And that's, again, something you can't watch for at home. Um, so if a child's getting sick from hand sanitizer, that's certainly a trip to the hospital. 
Dr. Jill Michaels is a pharmacist and managing director of the Palmetto Poison Center. It's an emergency hotline that provides information and treatment advice for poisonings and it's staffed by nurses and pharmacists. The center operates 24 hours a day and all services are free of charge and confidential. Call 1-800-222-1222, 1-800-222-1222. Wherever you live in the United States, if you suspect that you um, have taken an overdose of anything, <laughs> Jill, thank you so much for joining us today. Like I said, you and uh, Dr. Johnson gave some fascinating information and just important information about things that I don't think we talk enough about, right. but we need to, <laughs> but we need to. Yeah. Most poisonings occur in the home. And so it's all about home safety and, yeah. and that, that's key. And, and so we have a public educator here, the, 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 uh, poison center who goes out into the public to, to get people to think about what's in your home and what kids can grab a hold of. Yeah. Thank you again so much for joining us today on Wellness Wednesday. Sure. Thank you. Absolutely. In it together, SC and the Diabetes Advisory Council present Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday here on Coping with COVID. I'm Trey Taylor. And listen, if you have a story or initiative that could help someone cope with COVID, please email booking at coping with COVID. Uh, uh, it, booking at copingwithcovid.com. Booking at copingwithcovid.com. If you have a story or a product or initiative that could help someone cope with COVID, please email copingwithtraytaylor at gmail.com. Copingwithtraytaylor at gmail.com. We would love for you to be a proud sponsor, just like In It Together SC and the Diabetes Action Council. They sponsor Wellness Wednesday every, every Wednesday here on uh, Coping with COVID. Javis Tax Services, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities. Also, Palmetto Media Connections, uh, Palmetto Painting Services, Agape Counseling and Training Service. Services, Black Expo. The Charleston Black Expo is actually this weekend in Charleston featuring Kiera Shared. Also, the Comet Bus System and Computer Unique Tech Square Mall. Another one of our proud sponsors is the Fifth Circuit Solicitor's Office Attorney Byron Gibson. They're going to join us tomorrow and talk about expungements. If you've got any questions or comments or concerns about expungements, uh, you can see that graphic on the screen. Um, they will talk about that tomorrow. Also on uh, Friday, we're also going to be back on Friday for more information on coping with COVID. And on Friday, we're going to talk with uh, Monica Upson, who has a new book. We're going to talk to her and the Brooklyn Foundation Health and Wellness Center's 20th Annual Community Health Fair. That and more coming up this week on Coping with COVID. Listen, as usual, I leave you with a reading. I've been reading this book from uh, Cheryl Williams of Agape Counseling and Training Services. I talked to her yesterday and I meant to tell her that we've been reading uh, Conversations with God. This is a combination of some of her journal writings and scripture. Uh, this one says, Father, I've been preoccupied with the things of this world and trying to work out things on my own. I've obviously forgotten that you are in control. I don't know. Maybe I've been trying to do things on my own, which has not been my intent. But I also know how easy it is to go off on my own thinking that you're there with me. You are leading me in one direction. And sometimes I go in another thinking what I am doing is of you. And it's not really. I have done that and I don't want to do it again, Lord. I don't want others to influence me and that I don't or can't hear your voice speaking to me. I know you and I are on one accord, but sometimes I move so far away, it seems that we're no longer one. Please guide me, please direct me and know, God says, that I have already prepared the situation and the way has already been made straight. God says, I'm guiding you and directing you. God has already prepared the situation and the way has already been made straight. We just need to trust. That's Conversations with God. That was a good one today from Cheryl Mims Williams from Agape Counseling and Training Services. I'm Trey Taylor. Hey, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been fascinating. Listen, post and share this information out so we can get the message to the masses about poison control and what to do if you have overdosed or taken too much or you or your child has taken too much of something. Until the next time, I wish you peace and abundant blessings. Take care. God bless. Stay well. Get your vaccine, please. And I don't care what the CDC says. You need to wear your mask <laughs> over your nose and under your chin. We'll see you tomorrow, guys. Come on.
Coping with COVID and In It Together SC present Wellness Wednesday, brought to you by the Diabetes Action Council of South Carolina and DHEX Division of Diabetes and Heart Disease Management. Coping, Coping with COVID with Trey Taylor.